Yeah, so 2017 was a banner year for digital assets broadly. We saw a huge explosion in the amount of interest, lots of new economic actors coming to participate, and a lot of new investors speculating. And so we've seen a bit of a pullback from that, I think some profit taking, and also a bit of a cool off period, which is kind of good for the industry. We have a lot of work to do to scale the technology, but there's still a lot of opportunity here. What do you think it has been specifically that spooked the markets a bit? Is it some of the chatter around regulations? Is it perhaps some of the, the, the very fast price rises that we saw? I think probably the meteoric rise of value probably uh, caused some people to want to pull some uh, profits back, especially around Christmas time. People start to think about how are they going to give capital back to their friends and family, and I think that's sort of a normal trend. I want to get your take on some of the, the negative commentary we've seen around uh, cryptocurrencies. We heard economist Nori Orobini saying Bitcoin's crashing to zero. We heard uh, Morgan Stanley come out with a note in the past few days saying that actually um, Bitcoin is likened to the Nasdaq during the, the, the dot-com bubble uh, in the 2000s. Um, what do you say to those kind of comments? Yeah, well, I think we're seeing a lot of people have different opinions, and uh, there's a website dedicated to digital currency obituaries, and a lot of people have gotten this wrong over the past seven years, it's primarily because they aren't really understanding the technology, and that's okay. There's still a lot of education to happen here. There's also an enormous amount of opportunity. Digital scarcity is a very important concept. We're going to bring scarcity economics to the digital realm, and there are lots of new business models that are coming forward. In fact, more capital... <clears throat> was formed in uh, digital currency startups over the past year than in any other sector. And that's because investors see a lot of opportunity. The fact that markets are moving in a volatile way just means there's a lot more education to happen here. How do you clean up this space, Nicholas? So I've been doing a lot of investigative work recently into some of the bad actors in the space. I've come across a lot of pump and dump schemes, a lot of ICO scams too. Um, that seems to me a major concern for this industry right now to grow. Yeah, it's definitely been an issue. You've had a lot of projects basically sell tickets to amusement parks that haven't been built yet. And uh, that's been an emergence of a new form of crowdfunding called the initial coin offering. Now, there are actually regulated frameworks for doing this in a compliant way. But then you also have people that just do it the old-fashioned way or in a cowboy way. And unfortunately, that hurts consumers. I think platforms in the industry have an obligation to do consumer responsibility in a very thoughtful way. And you're seeing some differentiation there. Also, the SEC is clamping down on bad actors, which is the role of the regulator in this case. Talk, talk to me a little bit about regulation, because every time that word is mentioned, it seems there's some sort of hit on the price of these cryptocurrencies that people in this space don't like the word regulation, it seems to me. Um, is this a good thing, in your opinion, that we see more regulation in this space? You know, all the major companies in the industry are working really hard to develop compliant practices and working with regulators around the world. And I think at first, a lot of regulators didn't understand what they were dealing with, and they're catching up quickly. You've already seen legal frameworks in Japan and work through the G20 to start to elevate, uh, elevate uh, the questions around how to do these things in a compliant way. I think we're going to see a lot of progress there over the next year. Could you give me some specifics around what kind of regulation we think, where does it start from? Is it particularly around the exchanges, is it around other parts of the industry? I think most importantly, you're always focused on the consumer and consumer protection. So anything that can basically help educate consumers and provide consumer rights and responsibilities is where things are going to start. And then you're going to see other things that come into the uh, economic realm of responsibility, things like KYC and AML, all the things that the major financial institutions have to do as well. Talk to me a little bit about blockchain technology as well. This is something we've seen a lot of hype around over the past couple of years. Do we see real applications of the technology or still a lot of chatter around it? You know, just a week ago, we published a report called the future is decentralized in cooperation with volunteers from the UNHCR, UNDP, and the World Economic Forum. And we actually looked at the use of blockchain technology outside of financial services. So for development aid effectiveness, identity, uh, the use of blockchain technology uh, to essentially accomplish the sustainable development goals, property rights, and many more. And so there are actually many initiatives using blockchain technology for really exciting humanitarian and social good projects. And so those are going to take some time to come to market, but I'm really excited about those because they really push the human narrative of the technology forward and ultimately we're all humans we need to interact with this stuff in a thoughtful way and I'm really excited about those. What are the most promising use cases for the technology you see and what are the, going to be the first real applications of this this year? Yeah so beyond the emergence of new economic actors which is bringing billions of people into the economic fabric of the internet so there's still a ton of opportunity there there are billions of people that are unbanked and making it easier for basic people to perform economic transactions is a huge deal you increase economic velocity you have more businesses that get formed more value gets transferred around the world. But beyond that, I'm really excited about the identity use case. Again, billions of people around the world don't have the ability to prove who they are, which makes it really difficult for them to participate in democracies, to get loans, to get bank accounts, and much more. So the use of blockchain technology to develop soft self-sovereign identity is a really big deal. I'm excited about that. There are a bunch of projects. Uh, ID2020 is one of the more exciting ones.